Ellen Dygan, and um, I taught uh, microbiology, as well as being the coordinator for the medical laboratory technician program. And what year did you start teaching at the college? 1978. Uh, how did you find out about the position here? I was working uh, at St. Vincent's Hospital in New York City, and I had quit St. Vincent's, and I was looking for another job. And when I was at St. Vincent's, I was coordinator of um, a medical technology program, which is the lower level of the medical laboratory technician. And I also um, coordinated a cytology and histology program at St. Vincent's. So I had gotten my master's degree, and um, I was looking around. The hospital really didn't recognize my master's. So I said, it's time to go. <laughs> so I quit. And I was looking around, and interestingly enough, we had a, uh, an organization called the American Society for Medical Technology. And the job, the job here at Manchester was in the newsletter. And I saw the ad, and I wanted to move to Connecticut. I was dating somebody from Connecticut, and I wanted to move to Connecticut. And so I applied for the job. And I'll never forget when I came for my interview, my father came with me. And my father had been an executive for Shell Oil, and he worked in the RCA building in Rockefeller Center. And... Um, he sat around while I was being interviewed, and when I finished, I'll never forget, he said to me, do you think you'll be happy here? <laughs> and I said, I don't know. So three weeks later, they called me, and they said, you've got the job. And I had nowhere to live. And they said, school's starting in three weeks, and I had nowhere to live. So I wound up living in the Holiday Inn in East Hartford for three weeks till I found an apartment. So that was my, my start. Do you remember um, who interviewed you? Was it? I met Dr. Dennison <laughs> and um, Dean Fenn. And then my major interview was by the hospital uh, coordinators that I'd be working with. And the one question they kept emphasizing during my interview was, how do you um, compromise? And I didn't realize how important that was going to be because they were very difficult people. They, the program, the medical laboratory technician program, had originally started with the hospitals. And then they asked the college to become involved to offer kind of first-year courses. They didn't want to change. And... We also were trying to get the program here at Manchester, they were trying to get the program accredited nationally. And there were all kinds of new things that had to be done. And these people really didn't want to do them. So I had such a difficult first year, I never thought I'd have a second year. Was the difficulty with MCC or with the hospitals? Oh, with the hospitals, because they didn't want to change. They, everyone, there were four hospitals. And it was Hartford Hospital, it was Manchester Hospital, Wyndham Hospital, and Mer in those days, Merritt and Wallingford. And they were doing everything the way they wanted to do it. And they were so different. I mean, Hartford being so large and Wyndham being so small, and the other two kind of in the middle, that um, they didn't want to, they didn't want to compromise on um, really um, changing things so that we could meet the accreditation standards. So it was a very difficult year, and, um, uh, and I would come up with all these new curricula, and every month I'd present a new curricula, and they'd shoot me down. And so it got so bad at one of the meetings, I'll never forget this, George Christensen, who was, he was assistant division director, and he would come to the meetings as well, because I was new, meeting with these people, and at one point, the tension was so bad in the room, George said, please accept this because she's gone through more pads of paper than anybody else I've ever seen, so please take this idea. <laughs> he did that to break the tension. It was so bad. So how did things ultimately get resolved? Well, it came down to the point that uh, eventually we did start working together. We, uh, I really backed off a lot of the things that I would have liked um, at one point, we had to go to Hartford Hospital and really uh, go to the boss of the person that was in charge and really lean on, on her to, to change. So it ultimately did. And I would do these accreditation reports that were, when I started, because there were four, essentially four different programs, the accreditation reports that I'd have to prepare 
were probably 600 pages. Uh, I almost burnt up a copy machine in the old library once copying these pages. So the machine started smoking and the pages started turning brown. <laughs> What was the college like in the early, excuse me, the late 1970s when you began? Oh, to me it was fun. I mean, it was, after being in a hospital environment, you know, coming here was, I mean, I'll never forget even um, when I arrived, which was the beginning of the semester, uh, there was a, a barbecue, there was a wine and cheese party in the afternoon. I thought, wow, <laughs> you know, this is really incredible. And the other thing I remember so clearly, which was so much fun, when we'd have our activities period, which was like 140 to 255 in those days on Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, Andy Paterna was in charge of student activities, I think, and he would bring in bands, he'd bring in roller skates, and it was just so much fun. So it was a lot of hard work, but it was it was a lot of fun. And then my, I was hired, uh, this is also kind of unique to me, I think, coming from the real world. They realized that in order to get somebody from the real world and pay them enough money to come in from the real world, that they really had to hire at a high level. So I was hired in as, as an associate prof. And uh, I'll never forget my first year at commencement uh, when we were lining up behind the building to, uh, for marching. A lot of the old the people who had been here forever, they didn't remember me really. And if they were, you know, in faculty used to whatever, and they said to me, "Who are you? Where did you come from? You know, why are you up in this so far up in the line?" You know, and I think I was probably the only person that I was a full prof before I was tenured. I was a full prof. I made full prof my first try out, and then um, and then the next year I was up for tenure. So I'm probably the only person that was ever a full professor before they got tenure. <laughs> um, when did you retire? 2003. So you had almost... 20, I had 25. 25. I just hit 25. So what changes did you see in the college during those... Uh, oh, three tremendous. Tremendous. I mean, well, our facilities, for one. You know, going from the little buildings and, um, you know, coming... I was here in the Learning Resource Center, so, you know, tr tremendous facilities. Um, I had a, a, one thing that was probably rather unique to me as well was difficulty in getting students because, um, of course, working in laboratory medicine, we're working with um, blood, we're working with body fluids, and once HIV and AIDS came in, that did a terrible job, you know, for me to get students. So many people would say, I don't want to do that. So it was very difficult. I was always struggling to get my class filled. Did that change as we moved into the 2000 period? Not really. We never came back. Um, uh, I, I, part of it I blame on our professional association, that they really, our professional associations in laboratory medicine really didn't do, do a lot for education. And the other thing that happened was that a lot of the tests that at one time had only been done in the laboratory, uh, nurses started doing them right at the bedside, like glucose testing and things like that. And so I never realized the importance of, of being licensed. We were not, most of the states in the United States, believe it or not, are not licensed. People to work in a laboratory are not licensed. And so people, other people can do your job if you're not licensed, you know, as far as exactly what you can do. And so a lot of our work was taken away. So it was a real, the profession today, it barely exists. What changes did you see in the student population during the time you uh, were here? Well, for that, it was kind of up and down. I mean, you know, um, overall, of course, teaching higher level courses as I did, you know, I always had good students. Um, you know, I know some people really struggled, and I know some people felt over the years that, the quality of students went down. But because I was teaching such high-level science courses, um, and I had prerequisites to get into my program so that you had to have biology courses and so forth, math courses, I never saw a great downturn, really, in the students. I did a lot of nursing students um, that were at Capital. I probably taught microbiology to more of the Capital nursing students than Capital did because they didn't like their instructor. So they would come here. 
And, um, and now, of course, if I go to the hospital for something, all hospitals, you know, are in the area, they also go, oh, hello, you know, and I'm going, oh, God, you know, if it's a serious issue that's going on, I'm really not in the mood to chat, you know, and they're all excited that I'm there. But um, so I never saw a, a great downturn, you know, in the students. I had some phenomenal students, I mean, uh, you know, over the years, one in particular, um, today she's a lawyer, um, and she started out as a, as a mother on welfare finished my program. Um, she worked at Wyndham Hospital for a while, and she called me one day, and she said, I'd like to go back to school, and what would you suggest? And I said, well, why don't you take a bunch of courses, see where your interests are? And she did, and she called me a couple of years later and said, I'm just graduating with a degree in business, and I'm up in the, in the upper 15% of my graduating class at Eastern, and then she went on to law school. Um, so that was one. Another one won a full scholarship to Smith after she graduated, and uh, she went to veterinary school at Tufts. So I, I really had, you know, some phenomenal students so, over the years. Can you look back on your uh, 25 years here and point to something that you would say um, was your greatest accomplishment or your most proud of? Oh, dear. I don't know. There was so, I mean, there's so many. I guess initially getting the program accredited. Um, and overall, the quality of the program was greatest. I mean, at one point, out of um, when we get our, our students on graduation, took a certification exam, a national certification exam, and um, most of those years we ranked so high. One time out of we ranked three, number three out of 273 programs in the country. So I would say the quality of the program, and all the people I dealt with. I'm not saying it's me. I'm just saying it's the people I worked with. Um, tell us about some of the colleagues who you worked with who made an impression upon you. Oh, that, well, that was, I mean, it was, you know, what, one of the first ones. When I, I went in Faculty West, I had, the, I had the only office that didn't have a window. And uh, Roland Chirico used to come by, and he'd feel so bad for me because when they put my desk in, it was facing the wall. So my my uh, back was to the door, and one day I felt this breeze, and there was Roland blowing on my neck, um, which <laughs> which was really rather unique. And then there was someone, and then uh, Gene Spaziani would come by and go, uh, he'd bring in wine before lunch, you know, and say, oh, and I was interviewing somebody one day, and he came in with wine and said, oh, dear, have some wine before lunch, you know, and the person thought, what is, what is going on? You know, but I mean, uh, the people in the in, that taught biology, the pe people in the science department, you know, uh, I mean, uh, really were, many of them were such excellent teachers and, and uh, you know, really, uh, overall, I mean, the quality of the faculty was mm -hmm. tremendous. I mean, a lot of funny, you know, a lot of funny things, so. Well, we just interviewed Bob Dotson. Do you have any um Oh, Bob's been super. Work? I mean, he's, you know, he was always so much fun, so. Everybody, you know, in, in, in spite of being in science, everybody was, uh, you know, um, w at times we would have so much fun, and Bob certainly was. He'd bounce around, and, you know. So, so let me ask a question. You talked about your dad accompanying you to the interview, and he had certain reservations. Did you ever um, <laughs> put those to rest? Oh, yes. Well, it, it, it uh, you know, I could see, you know, it was just such a different thing. Oh, I put them to rest, right? I really, it didn't bother me, you know, looking at these little, looking at the little buildings. And one of the things when I had an accreditation, we used to have a site visit, too, as part of our accreditation. And um, somebody, one of the teams came in, and this, and this woman said, uh, uh, one of the visitors, she said, oh, these, it looks like a little motel. Look, these look like little motel buildings, you know. And I thought, oh, God, isn't that atrocious? But, you know, the other thing was um, also in comparison to, to being in this building and teaching science courses, down in, um, down in C building, which was our science building, I would do, uh, we would do lecture and lab together, you know, and um, just have a break from lecture and then do lab. And I would have 35 people in a lab by myself, you know, and they were sitting elbow to elbow, you know, and you've got Bunsen burners with gas and everything, which is not the safest thing. Um, but then we moved up here and we got these labs, but they only hold 20. So, I mean, you know, it was a problem because many people, you know, the number of students kept increasing and it was really difficult because you couldn't have as many sections as you needed to accommodate. But when I think back on those days, you know, what we were trying to do with, uh, in set, with those facilities was... 
Can you recall any funny stories or situations that may have taken place either in class or during a lab? Oh, in class, well, a lot of fun, well, I'm trying to think, a lot of funny stories. There's always, one day I handed out the wrong course outline, beginning of class, and I went in and handed them out. I had one class at 8 and one class at 11, and I went in and handed out the wrong outline, and I saw all these people looking very puzzled, you know. And then finally someone had the nerve to say, this is the wrong outline. <laughs> so, you know, crazy things like that that, uh, that you do. But. Somebody who had an office right across from you and back at the U.S. was this interesting person. Oh, John, oh yeah, John <laughs> Gustafson. Oh, absolutely. John was always so much fun. I'll never forget he had a pink scarf one time. He was running around with his pink scarf on. So, yeah, he was great. But on one-to-one, -one, when he would have a student in his office, he was like Mr. Chips. Mm -hmm. He was the greatest, a one on one, but he was, he was a lot of fun, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you were talking to a person who had just been hired to begin uh, teaching at MCC this coming fall, what advice would you give that person? Hmm. Well, of course, it's a very inst different institution today than it was when I started. So, um, I would say relax. <laughs> which isn't always easy. Um, relax, and I think it would depend on, on whether or not they had taught somewhere else. I mean, I had not. I mean, I was teaching at the hospital, but that was, of course, a very different, you know, environment. And uh, so for me, um, you know, it, it would really depend on whether or not they had taught somewhere else. But I would say try to relax and just and, it's, and for me, this would be very hard advice, but go with the flow. Just try to enjoy it. One of the things they, they did to me my first year uh, here also was they put me on the promotion committee. Now, in those days, you could do that. Today, there were requirements. In those days, there weren't. And I didn't understand anything. So this is like, um, well, this must have been uh, October. We're choosing people for committees. And somebody nominates me. And Mario Fiandella, who was our division director, says no. <laughs> you know? And they're all saying, yeah, because I didn't understand that you spent most of your January vacation reading files, you know. And they're going, oh, we vote for Ellen. Yeah, everybody votes for Ellen. Oh, Ellen's elected. And on the committee, Howie Bergman was chair. And uh, Bob Vader was on the committee, who read the union contract to us for two meetings. Um, and it was Howie Bergman was making chocolate chip cookies, I think, at one point for the committee. So it was, I thought, what is this? <laughs> you know, what, I, what have I gotten myself into with this, with this group? But, um, you know, just go with the flow. I mean, but as I said, it's very, it's very different institution today than it, it was then. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, just that I, I really enjoyed um, enjoyed my, my tenure here. Um, I realized at the hospital, uh, when I was in college, I majored in medical technology, which is really what I, what I was doing. But um, I really uh, always said all I wanted to do was work in a lab. And I got bored working in microbiology, um, and, and so I wound up teaching. I applied for the position of teaching coordinator. And I really realized that's where I belonged. I belonged in teaching. I didn't belong working in the lab solely. And so um, I, was, I was able to combine the two. And of course, at MCC, I continued. And I loved teaching. I really did. I felt that's really where I belonged. And I think that's true for most of the faculty here, that you know uh, they belong here. It's, it's really what they should be doing is teaching.